There's $5 million hidden in the Rocky Mountains, and all we gotta do is find it. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. I got something very exciting. Very exciting. Does it excite you to know? Yeah. I know you get excited when you stroke the table. When I wax on and wax off on the table. Okay, this is, if you follow these kinds of things, like buried treasure and whatnot. This like is, on Twitter? This is kind of old news to you, but this was new news to us, and so maybe it'll be new news to many of you. And that is the fact that there is a millionaire in Santa Fe, New Mexico, who has buried five million dollars worth of treasure. A millionaire? Yep, he's a millionaire, and he's taken five million dollars worth of gold coins and jewels and diamonds. He actually has an, a microscopic uh, autobiography in there. He's got some of his hair samples. He's a weird man. Five million dollars worth of stuff, treasure, that he has buried somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. And listen, this is a crazy story because his name is Forrest Finn. He's an eccentric guy. I think he's like in his 80s now. But in 19, when was it, 1988, he was diagnosed with cancer and had some, he was going to have to get his kidney replaced and uh, the doctor said, you have a 20% chance to live three years. That is not good. And so he was like, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take treasure with me into the wild. And I'm going to die in the wild with this treasure. Say in the forest, because that was his name. I'm going to die in the forest, because my name is Forrest. That's my name. Good. And I'm going to die out here, and I'll leave a legacy of... We we'll leave a treasure of booty. No, but that was his idea. What a guy, you know. He's, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna go out into the wilderness and die with this treasure, and then you might come out and find me, my skeleton, like holding it. Is that what he was gonna do? Bury himself with it? I don't know the, pl the exact plan. We might need to get him in here on an interview situation. So we're looking for. A, we're. So he didn't die. We don't interview people though. That's on, he didn't on die. Is what you're saying? No, he lived through this ordeal. And uh, but then he was like, you know what? That was a good idea. That was a good idea I had about the wilderness. I lost my voice for a second, the but then it came back. The forest. And so in uh, 2009 or 2010, he is not uh, clear on exactly what year it was. He went and he actually buried this And he's still not dead. Chest. So he's surviving. Still and alive. He, and he knows where this is. So we can go and threaten his life and find out where the treasure uh, is. Yeah, Pretty simple. Oh, come on now. Hey, hey, don't, don't, just put don't, a fire poker whoa, up to his temple. No, hey, hey, don't encourage people. Not a gun, it, just a fire poker. I'm not gonna shoot you, I'm just gonna shove a fire poker into your brain if you don't tell me where this five million dollars is, you old man. That's what I would do. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you need a pill of some sort? <laughs> I don't know, a man. A tablet? It kind of makes me angry. This guy, why do I make you angry, son? Listen, I've created the opportunity of a lifetime. We're gonna role play this. I've created the opportunity, I'm kind of talking Bang! about my old man character a little bit. I've created the opportunity of a lifetime. It's not there, how do you know it's there? Oh, okay, see, you're one of those naysayers, man. I knew you were gonna say this when I brought he's this just, up. He's just You were gonna say legs. that, no, okay, well, okay. Well, uh, here's a, a secondary fact. He wrote a book about, with clues in it. He wrote a book that he sells on Amazon. Okay. That has clues to where the treasure is. And it's currently selling for $45. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> okay. $45? On, like on my Kindle? Nothing costs more than $9.99 on a Kindle. No Kindle version. What, is it? what do you mean a Kindle? You got no battery power out in the forest. <laughs> I don't care how long so That's it. So he's just trying to sell his book. No. Okay. For all, a treasure all that the doesn't proceeds exist. All the proceeds of the sale of the book go directly to this library that he's a fan of. Ooh, fire poker coming <laughs> off. I'm pulling the fire poker back. Okay, so he's so he's a he's a giver, not okay, a taker. But he he wrote. And let me see the name of this thing. He wrote uh, "Thrill of the Chase," a memoir, which is an autobiography. Uh, that's when somebody writes a book about themselves. Bingo. Not when it just writes itself. I always thought when it said auto, I was like, "What is this? Like you hit a button and the book gets written?" Not how it works. <laughs> you write yourself. Not yet. Not yet. In the future, that's how autobiographies will work. But you just buy one at Best Buy. Or something. So he uh, he wrote this thrill of the chase, and it has all these clues. Now, uh, there's a bunch of uh, interestingly, a, a lot of people have been keeping up with this, of course. And I saw on Huffington Post, they've like they check in on this situation and write like an update article every once in a while 
about uh, where this is at because hundreds of th and thousands of people have gotten in on the chase. One person, because um, apparently it's in the Rocky Mountains and like based on some clues that we're gonna go through in a second, people have um, constructed maps and they've uh, gone out into this national park where they think that it is. Uh, he's given secondary clues, subsequent clues to kind of help people narrow it down. One okay. person got arrested for like digging a hole in a national park and another person had to be- Was it forest and was he burying the treasure? Nope. And another person had to be rescued because they got lost. And then people started saying, you see what you're doing? You're putting people in danger because you've got this so-called buried treasure out there and people are going and risking their life. And he's like, I'm just adding to the spice of life, something like that. He's like, Every, everyone's responsible for themselves. And just because somebody wants to go out there and live a little bit doesn't mean you should get upset with me. And just because somebody digs a hole in a national park doesn't mean they need to be prosecuted. Sounds like he's got a God complex and something in his throat. Um, so you could say that this guy may be pulling people's legs to sell books, but based on the fact that he is actually a millionaire, this is the kind of thing that this guy would that do. That millionaires do. I think that it's out there and the people just haven't been able to put together the clues. There's like over 30 people who've claimed to have found it, but then they never have it. And then he said he's gotten like thousands of emails where people are like, I know where it is, but I want you to go with me to it. And that's where the fire poker comes in. Maybe there's people like you who have a fire poker and they want to get him up there and be like, oh, listen here, old man, but tell me where it is. That's not how it works though. Oh, I could, it could work that way. But here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna read a poem uh, that apparently has most of the clues to where this Did thing is. Did you write at. this poem? No. <laughs> Forrest wrote it. I've totally gone into my character. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna keep being this guy, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Emperor Arnold Jr. I could be Gus. Or whatever it is. I could be Gus. You want me to read it as Gus? Or do you want me to read it as Larnold? Larnold. Okay. Is it Larnold? I, I get their names. All right, could we play some... Um, can we play some dramatic music? Because... Sure. All right, I'm gonna read this poem with clues in it. As I have gone alone in there, and with my treasures bold, I can keep my secret where, and hint of riches new and old. Begin it where warm waters halt, and take it in the canyon down. Okay, begin where warm, warm waters halt, and take it down in a canyon. Not far, so but too late. far to walk. Put in below the home of brown. So, coyote dump. From there, it's no place for the meek. The end Home is drawing. Brown. That's what you call droppings in the woods. The hint, mm, I think it's probably somebody's homestead named Brown. The end is drawing ever nigh. There'll be no paddle up your creek. Just heavy loads and water high. I've kind of gotten off a little rhythm in the rhythm of my poem because I just wrote it. Heavy loads and water high, waterfall. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But Terry scant with marvel gaze, just take the chest and go in peace. So under a waterfall, there's gonna be a fire. Yeah, a blaze. Maybe like a reflection is what I was thinking, maybe. Just of the sun on the water. Mm -hmm. That sounds good, I like you that. You can't walk there, you have to swim. You can't walk, you have to swim. You can't walk, you have to swim. There's no paddle up your creek. That's good, Link, you're figuring this out. So why is it that I Scuba. must- my must go and leave my trove for all to seek. The answer's I already know, I've done it. I've done it, tired, and now I'm weak. So hear me all and listen good, your effort will be worth the cold. If you are brave and in the wood, I will give you title to the gold. Because he has said, if you find it, he will give it to you, it is yours to keep. Mythical beasts, we can do this, let's do this together. I'm a believer now, we can, you can find it and I'll take a cut. We'll all split it up amongst all of us. We can triangulate it. Hold on, this is, there's lots of legal ambiguities that you're introducing. If I find it, I'm keeping it. <laughs> you wouldn't have ever found it if it wasn't for me. If one of the mythical beasts finds it, I'm taking a percentage. Because it was our idea to go for them to go look at it. Look for it. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, you just go look at it, tell us about it, and then we'll take it. You know what time it is. I'm Astro Thomas from Nova Scotia, Canada. It's time to spin the Wheel of Mythicality. Have you seen these yet? The Mythical 2.0 It's the mythical shoe now in gray leather. It's got the new the new logo on the insole. Lots of nice things happening. It's a good looking shoe. A portion of the proceeds go to fighting injustice around the globe. Smells like leather. Evil villain monologue. Now there's two of us. How do you do a monologue with two people? Let's you do make it a dialogue. Or we can be one evil villain together and just finish the sentences, let's do that. And you have to put your head right here when you say it. No, I go here and then you replace me. Oh, and then I replace I you. It. Greetings, good doers. 
I am an evildoer, and I want to tell you that you're all going to die. Have you seen my firebalker? I like to take old men into the woods and put it up next to their temple, trying to get them to sniff the future. I know you have those powers, and I will take those powers of sniffing the future. Do you follow? And then I will also... <laughs> That's how you do it. You start a sentence and then I continue telling them that they will all die if they do not begin to obey our wishes sniff. of s sniffing the future. Sniff the future. A little bit came out. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I cried a little bit, man. I know, I feel like I cried too. Look, look, I did, seriously. <laughs>